Hello, this is Mr. Mormon. Welcome to your first content lesson. Uh, this is our first unit, The Nature of Science, and the first lesson in Nature of Science is called Think Like a Scientist. Now, this being our first content lesson, I would like you to take notes. And to give you a little direction on taking notes, um, you know, how much is too much and how much is not enough. Uh, to make it easy for you, I'm going to... Uh, Everything that I write down by hand should be what you write down as well. At a minimum, you should copy everything I write down in your notes. Going beyond that and copying things that will be useful for you to help remember the main points of the lesson is a good idea. I'll check your notes in class uh, for your homework grade. Now, you can either take your notes on loose leaf paper and have a note section as a subsection in your science notebook, uh, or you can take notes in a composition book or a spiral notebook if that's what you have for class. So let's begin. This is Think Like a Scientist. You should write that down as your heading for this set of notes. Lesson NS1, Think Like a Scientist. So we should begin with a definition of science. So what is science? We've talked about it a lot in class already, but a good definition comes from our Prentice Hall biology book by Miller and Levine. Let me just read a little bit of what they say. Science has several features that make it different from other human endeavors. First, science deals only with the natural world. Second, scientists collect and organize information in a careful, orderly way, looking for patterns and connections between events. Third, scientists propose explanations that can be tested by examining evidence. In other words, science is an organized way of using evidence to learn about the natural world. The word science also refers to the body of knowledge that scientists have built up after years of using this process. People often think about everyday events in a scientific way. Suppose a car won't start. Perhaps it's out of gas. A glance at the fuel gauge tests that idea. Perhaps the battery is dead. An auto mechanic can use an instrument to test that idea. A logical person would continue to look for a mechanical explanation, testing one possible explanation after another until the cause of the problem was identified. All scientists bring the same kind of problem-solving attitude to their work. They consider the whole universe a system in which basic rules apply to all events, small or large. Scientists assume that those rules can be discovered through scientific inquiry. They collect data as a means of achieving their goal, a better understanding of nature. For scientists, science is an ongoing process, not the discovery of an unchanging absolute truth. Scientific findings are always subject to revi revision as new evidence is developed. In keeping with this approach to pursuing knowledge, certain qualities are desirable in a scientist. Curiosity, honesty, open-mindedness, skepticism, and the recognition that science has limits. An open-minded person is ready to give up familiar ideas if the evidence demands it. A skeptical person continues to ask questions and looks for alternative explanations. Scientists are persuaded by logical arguments that are supported by evidence. Despite recognizing the power of science, scientists know that science has definite limits. Science cannot help you decide whether a painting is beautiful or cheating on a test is wrong. So how can we take all of that and put it into a definition of science? Well, in class, we said simply uh, one of the main things scientists is trying to do is to get to the truth. Here's a definition you can write in your notes. The goal of science is to investigate. to understand nature, to explain events in nature.
and to use these explanations to make useful predictions. Next, let's go through the things that scientists do, the things that we're going to have to do in class to be scientists. Scientists make observations and inferences. definition for observation. Observation is using one or more of your senses to gather information. Now, we, we need to be familiar with two different types of observations. There are quantitative observations, which are counted or measured. These describe the quantities of something, and it's right there in the root of the word. Quantitative observations will always involve numbers. One way that students often remember this is there's an N in the middle of the word quantitative, which can remind you of the word numbers. Qualitative observations. involve characteristics that cannot be counted or measured. They describe the qualities of things. And again, it's right there in the root of the word. Um, th they describe qualities or characteristics of, a, of an object, such as uh, color or texture. Those were always going to be qualitative observations. And a way to remember this, remember the N in quantitative reminds us of numbers. The L in qualitative can remind us of looks, describing how things look is going to be qualitative, whereas the N can remind us of the numbers in quantitative observations. Now, an inference is an interpretation or explanation of an observation.
Let's do some examples. A quantitative observation that you could make about this picture. Think of one. How about the insect has six legs? That would be a quantitative observation because it's got a number in it. How about a qualitative observation? Could you make a qualitative observation? Maybe this insect has wings. That would be a qualitative observation. If you wanted to make an inference, you would go beyond what you're seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, tasting. Um, and in this case, maybe um, this insect looks like it could give a bad sting. Okay, that would be an inference. Let's try another one. You can see here in the picture, the floor is wet. That would be an observation. We can see that. What would be some inferences that could go along with that? Again, that would be an explanation or an interpretation of what we're seeing. Maybe something like um, the roof must be leaking or the sink overflowed. The school is flooding. Someone forgot to let the dog out. Those would all be examples of inferences. Okay, I think that's enough for today. We'll continue this lesson, Think Like a Scientist, tomorrow.